I would still like a response to my question regarding the inequity that I talked about uh, with the uh, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. That is wealth that is passed down, and it's documentable wealth. The same way that the wealth created or the wealth stolen as a product of slavery was also documentable wealth. We have numbers that demonstrate precisely how much wealth was stolen, and that's money that in some way could be given back. Now, if we're saying that it's absolutely impossible to give that money back because it's too hard to trace, we'd have to uh, give money to the African tribes, we'd have to give money to people who are no longer exist, that's absolutely fine, but we have to understand that we haven't really come to terms with that injustice that's been perpetrated, and if we are admitting that no one... Um, that no one is perfectly entitled to absolutely everything that their uh, ancestors were uh, had stolen from them, then we also have to accept that there are people today who benefit from the fact that their parents and grandparents profited from this immoral system. And, and the way to deal with that is with a social safety net that enables everyone to thrive. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you there. <clears throat> yes. Well... The, the core of the American system, this will actually answers your question directly, is that how do, what do we do about the conquest ethic of the past? And here there are two options. There are two options. One option is we establish equal rights under the law. That was the solution of the civil rights movement, that we have had race-based discrimination, we've had racial hierarchy. Let's stop. Let's treat people according to the color of this, according to the content of their character. Equal rights under the law. <laughs> Equal rights under the law. The other option, which you're defending, is you could essentially call it, let's correct for history. Let's correct for history. Let's try to find out who are the people in possession of stolen goods, and let's return it. Now, the first thing I'm trying to say is, this is a hugely controversial principle because it actually involves wrecking the freedom of a free society. You basically have to, to put it frankly, if we were to carry that out, go into people's homes and take their stuff. Take their furniture, take their cars. You don't seem to have even the guts to do that. You don't have the moral self-confidence to do it yourself. It may be, if I am advocating a rule of social justice and I'm advocating it for the whole society, before I persuade everybody else, let's say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I believe everybody should give 10% of their wealth to help the poor. And I go, you know what? There, the Bible says this, the Bible says that everybody should give 10% of their wealth to help the poor. And somebody says, Dinesh, are you giving 10% of your wealth? And I'm like, actually no, but I did do some tutoring. And you go, wait a minute, aren't you advocating? Aren't you saying that there is a moral duty to do this? Why don't you do it? Before you convince us, you do it. And you're like, I don't think I should do it because society is extremely complex. And I don't think I should do it unless everybody else does it. No. Either you believe in it and you do it. Once you've done it, you might impress us. And then you might convince the rest of us that our wealth is also ill-gotten. <laughs> But you can't do it, and I'm not trying to indict everybody of hypocrisy, only you. Because, because you're the one, you're the one who said, I'm the beneficiary of illicit privilege. So you're a really good starting point, because I'm asking, if you're in possession of stolen goods, why aren't you willing to return them? So that's why fundamentally I see your charity. You know, during the Civil War, there was a guy who goes, I'm very happy to give I've given three cousins to the war and I'm ready to sacrifice my wife's brother. That's basically your ethics. You're willing to have social justice with other people pay, but you're not willing to pay. So that's the problem. And that's the problem with the progressivism that marches behind social justice while protecting its own privileges. You know how you said, we all have to survive. Really? You have to be at Amherst to survive? You don't have to be at Amherst to survive. You have to be at Amherst to benefit. You have to be at Amherst because you're getting opportunities at this college that many other people are not getting. So if you say you believe in equal opportunity, you're a hypocrite. Because you are taking advantage of opportunities unavailable to others. But for you, this hypocrisy is fully justified because you are militating on behalf of the poor. But if, it's, if, if you are against privilege, this college is privilege. 
So there's a glaring hypocrisy and you will never turn your moral mirror on yourself to say, what am I doing about it? That's my point. For you, society should act before you do to enforce your moral code. Let's take a couple more questions.